is up guys and welcome back for another build for Godfall. For today's video I want to share with you all a super powerful build and a really awesome discovery that I made for Mesa. If anyone is unaware, Mesa and her ability to inflict and consume poison is by far the strongest in the game. The damage and poison buffs she receives from her new shards is absolutely ridiculous. I will not be surprised if she is the first Valor Plate to get a major nerf. Her shards are by far the strongest in the game. If you guys enjoyed the video, a like would be really appreciated. If you would like to see more of my builds, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. With that, let's get right into the build. Alrighty, so before we look at the items and the gear pieces, I want to show you all how we are able to kill everything with just one punch. The Sundering Slam is a move I don't really like to use, but Mesa really makes it feel like it's something else. All this happens thanks to the shard Way of the Mountain. Whenever our Sundering Slam becomes fully charged, it will consume poison from nearby enemies. If you successfully consume poison, when you finish a slam, you will release a shockwave dealing 25% of the consumed damage dealt. Normally, if you use this move without consuming any poison from the enemies, it won't do anything. Here you can see if I use this move, I don't get any shockwaves. I will have the basic Sundering Slam move every time. So how did I get the shockwave and big damage without consuming any poison? That all happens thanks to one neat trick. After you inflict poison on the enemies, you then need to consume with your Sundering Slam. After you consume, don't finish off your move by releasing your shockwave. Rather just wait and get knocked out of the move. You cannot cancel out of the move in any other way. You will need to have an enemy knock you out of the move. If you get knocked down without releasing the shockwave, it will actually keep it stored. That means when you use the Sundering Slam again when it's fully charged, you will have access to the shockwave. Few things to note here. You cannot stack the damage from constantly consuming with the slam and getting interrupted each time. Every time you use the Sundering Slam to consume, it will reset the shockwave damage to the new consumed damage that you have dealt. Since Mesa and her poison consume does ridiculous amount of damage, thanks to her next shard we use which is the Avalanche Technique, we can consume for millions and millions of damage. Having a slam stored with a shockwave and then entering a boss room will make easy work of everything. It is a great way to take out a whole room as it spawns. With that, let's now have a look at the weapons and gear to make the best use of this ability. The weapons we would want to use for this ball is a longsword which will give you the ability to inflict ailments with your weapon techniques. This perk is originally on the Sincerity Longsword but this longsword will not spawn in Earth DPS. So you will need this ability to spawn on either your Sword of Dominance or your Blade of Conquest. You could use the Longsword Stinger which has the ability to inflict ailments with weapon techniques. This is basically all you need in terms of weapons for this build. Make sure you have crit chance on your weapons as much as you can. For the amulet, we use the Pendant of the Livers. This will increase our consume damage by a good amount. Other amulets you got for is the Amulet of the Betrayer for better survival options if you need that extra safety. For the charm, the Beetle Talisman is super amazing. For me, if I am making a consume build, this is the best item I like to use. Since you'll be doing millions of damage for consume every time, the shockwave will delete everything around you. Consuming with your Sundering Slam or timing attacks without this charm just feels meh. You just get the effect of consume and nothing else. With this not only will it look cool, but the shockwaves that you release will kill almost everything around you. Since the avalanche technique can only affect one enemy at a time when you hit them with your weapon techniques, you can see here, consuming without this charm kept Macros alive and I had to use my shockwave to kill him. And now here you can see I consumed from Zamora and Lava just died from the shockwave. This way I can sit and wait for the enemies to just come in and release my shockwave to kill them. Or if you want to store the shockwave, have them attack you instead and get knocked down. Firstly, for the rings, we get the Mechalize Hail. We'll be consuming a lot, so this will keep our overhealth nice and high. For the second ring, we can go for anything. I use the Toxic Ring to increase my ailment duration, which will further increase our consume damage. For the banner, we kept it to the Plague Pennant. And for the Livestorm, we use the Beat of the Hardened Ethereum for more ailment power. Now let's have a look at the augments. Once again, Implacable is probably one of the most important augments you will need for this build. Your Sundering Slam can take a lot of hits and has almost the full effect of Force Barrier while you're using this move. Which means you cannot be knocked out of the move so easily by smaller or even larger enemies. But you can still take damage while you're charging the Slam. Which is why we use this to get full invincibility while we charge up our Slam. We use Iron Heart for more crit chance. Mirror is a great augment as it can easily inflict mark of weakness on the enemies. This will allow you to take less damage from them. We use Glamour and Rift for more damage per element on the enemies. The Azura Fang is freaking amazing. It will greatly increase our poison duration for a cost of a little bit of poison power. 
totally worth it in my opinion. This is the most important my augment, getting this in primal would be much better. Paradise is the augment that will keep giving us our weapon technique charge really fast whenever we land a critical hit. This effect will stack with each critical hit that you land. Twilight Bloom for just some good old weapon tech damage. Then for our last augment we get focus for a little bit more of over health gain on crits. Here is a look at the skill tree. Make sure to go fully into Sundering Slam so you can charge it up fully a lot faster. Timing attacks will also consume poison if you have reached Ascended status on Mesa. Get one point into Polarity so you can use this to inflict poison if you need it. Everything else is pretty much standard. Here is a look at the Ascension powers in the stat sheet. That is it for the build guys, of course Mesa and her consume is probably one of the most powerful in the game. A nerf for her is sure to drop in the next patch of the game, no doubt at all, so have fun with her while you can. Using the Sundering Slam to consume and having the ability to store the shockwave is a big deal. You can easily enter a room and just use your slam to kill the enemies. You can finish the fight before it even starts. You can get even more damage from consume if you use the God Beast Icor and its poison spread ability. But it's really not necessary as it already does more damage than it needs to. This build can beat Exalted Tower super easily and everything else as well. You will have absolutely no trouble getting through the towers with this build. Proc your Lifestone to get that invulnerability for a few seconds and use the Consume to massacre all enemies. Hope you guys enjoyed the build, it was a good amount of fun to play with this. This build has a great amount of survivability with the over health gain as well as the invincibility. What do you guys think? Are you guys going to try consuming with your Sundering Slam and kill bosses with just one punch? Comment down below. I would love to hear from you all. I will catch you all next time.